Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. In the previous episode, we got beat by the Edmonton Oilers in Game 7 of the Battle of Alberta. The first Battle of Alberta in a very long time and these two rivals went off against each other what a round it was and you know what I can't I can be disappointed we were one victory away from the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 2004 it's been a long long time 16 years I guess you know, game one victory and then we lost two in a row game four victory lost one won one and then lost game seven our offense was nowhere. Even in the games we won, we barely won. The 4-1 win, yeah. 3-1 win, that's not by a lot. <laughs> that's nothing. And, man, if I was to say who was... I don't know who the best player in that... Ugh, that's hard. The best player in the entire playoffs for me was David Riddich. You know, you can say Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monaghan... Any choice is, is fair, but David Riddich did everything in his power. First round, we swept the San Jose Sharks. It could have gone a lot differently if we had allowed two extra goals here or there. The series would have been completely different. But he was phenomenal. Second round, 4-3 win. 3-1 loss isn't bad. 3-1 loss isn't bad. 4-1 win is great. 2-1 loss, your offense needs to bail you out. Sometimes. It does. Especially with Calgary, with great guys like Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goudreau and Sean Monaghan. They need to bail you out. And I know this team is going to take a lot of work. It's not what I want it to be currently, but we said year one is when... Or is we wanted to see how the entire league performed, and we, all, we know. We know what this team is now. We know we are good enough to make the playoffs with this current team. But we are not good enough to compete with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. It's going to take a while, and I'm not sure the right path to take. We could blow this team up immediately. I think there's a few contracts I want to move specifically. We'll get to that. Draft is this episode. We will get a lot done. Okay, but first, let's go ahead and check out the stats from, from the playoffs. Obviously, we played 11 games. They're going to be a little bit skewed, but we'll go over it briefly. Johnny Goudreau was great, but everybody got really silent. There was only a few guys that showed up here or there. Nine points is great, but when it's Johnny Hockey and you have... If you're nicknamed after the sport, you got to be better. Sean Monaghan had a, had a great year. One of his best seasons ever. And they all kind of dropped the ball in the postseason. Elias Lindholm wasn't bad, but they didn't show up when they needed to. And it's year one. We got 24 more tries at this. But they need to be better. Michael Backlund was great. Sam Bennett was really good. Matthew Kachuk was really quiet. One game winner, so I'll give him that. Tobias Reeder. Three goals in the first round. Jankowski, and then it drops off from there. It does. There's not a whole lot to say about our depth. Defenseman. Mark Giordano was really good. Six points in 11 games. Rasmus Anderson. Five points in 11. TJ Brody. Two points in three. And there's something that I haven't said yet. A lot, a lot of players on this team need a contract extension. The majority of our defense need a contract extension. There's more defensemen on this team that don't have a contract next season than do. But we, everybody needs to get better. We need to implement a new system. Noah Hannafin wasn't great. Gustafsson was quiet. Defensively, we were really good throughout the entire postseason. This is what this team is built for. But in my experience playing NHL 20, you're going to win via offense. I've rarely ever won because of a good defense because your offense will let you down. Goaltending. David Riddich. There's not much more I can say. A 943 and he lost in the second round he was the MVP and if he can continue keeping this up if he can continue playing this way throughout his career here 
in Calgary. I want him as my long-term starter. Cam Talbot, maybe he's the backup se next season. Maybe Gillies is. But for right now, I'm not changing the starter. David Riddich is my guy going into next year. Especially since he has two years left on that contract, or I guess one more season because it's not technically the end of this year. But he's my guy going forward. There's no question about that. No question. And to show you the, the reason I'm scared about this offseason, the contracts. Let's, let's show you the contract extensions real quick, or lack thereof. All expiring, TJ Brody, Gustafsson, Hamannick, Jankowski, Forbot, Shillington, Szyznik, Mangia Payne. There's a whole lot of players that need contracts, and we don't have a lot of money to play with this offseason. We currently have $10 million. That's not a lot, especially if we want to go out into free agency and build up this team. There's a few guys on the squad that I'm not sure are a fit anymore. One of them being Milan Lucic, because he's terrible. And I that would get us a free TJ Brody if we could get that contract away from Calgary. And I'm going to do everything in my power to get it away. Hamnick, Gustafsson, we're going to lose at least one of them. TJ Brody. It, is there any benefit to giving him a contract right now? Is he worth $5 million? Probably. Gustafsson, I can wait on. Hamannick, I'll wait on. Jankowski, he's going to be a great fourth-line center for us. For the foreseeable future, a great two-way forward. He played really solid throughout the entire season. Let's see if we can give him that contract. Would he take eight years? Would you be happy with a $1.65 million centerman on the fourth line for eight years if he takes that contract i'm happy with it everybody else maybe shillington we can give a contract to what do you want for eight years uh, well i'd rather give you like a four-year contract at uh he'd be ufa i'll give him three years at 1.4 and he'll probably make the defensive core this next season so i'll, I'll give him that contract hopefully he takes it Everybody else, I'm going to wait on. There's no no reason for me to give out any more contracts at this point in time. I just want to see how the draft goes. So, since uh, I did implement this in my in my Alaska franchise mode, we're, we're going to uh, slow sim the rest of the postseason, day by day, see storylines. So, obviously, the Western Conference Finals are underway. Edmonton and Chicago... And then you got Boston Pittsburgh. That is a rematch of what 2011. Jankowski, no 2013, something like that. Signs the contract, eight years, fourth line centerman, beauty. Shillington also signs that contract. That's good for us. That is very, very good. But let's see how the postseason shapes up. Edmonton is up one nothing. Pittsburgh is also up one nothing. Who's gonna Who's gonna win the Stanley Cup year one? Edmonton's up two nothing. And Pittsburgh is tied. Boston ties that series in the East. Game number three. Edmonton is about to sweep Chicago. Oh. And in the East, Boston's up 2-1. Okay. Is there going to be a sweep in the West? Oh, Chicago forces a game five. Boston is up 3-1 in the East. Okay, draft class, I will talk to you about that very soon, but I want to see how this postseason finishes up. And it's going to be Boston-Edmonton. It's going to be a 1990 Stanley Cup Finals rematch. Who is going to walk away as your Stanley Cup champions year number one, 2020? Boston is up 1-0. Will, will Connor McDavid take home Stanley Cup number one in his career? 2-0 Boston. Okay, Austin Sersnick is back. Oh, whatever. Postseason is over. I, I literally could care less. Zach Ronaldo. Goodbye. I don't, I don't care. Okay, and Boston. Are they going to take home the Stanley Cup? 2-1. Edmonton cuts the series lead in half. I'm cheering for Edmonton just because they beat us. I know I'm supposed to hate them, but they do tie up the series. Who's walking away? And Boston is one game away from Lord Stanley Cup. Who's going to take it? The Boston Bruins are your 2020 
Stanley Cup champions. Okay, Boston. And the Bridgeport Sound Tigers win the Calder Cup, taking home the Stanley Cup after getting defeated by St. Louis in Game 7 on their home ice. Last year, they take home the Stanley Cup. I mean, it would have been hard for us to get past Chicago. I don't think we would have won the Stanley Cup this year. Edmonton was just that good, but Boston was that much better. I mean, what a fantastic run to the Stanley Cup Finals for Boston. Same for Edmonton, but I guess we're just going to have to deal with a ticked-off Connor McDavid next year. But let's go ahead and check the awards for year number one. The Boston Bruins are your Stanley Cup champions. The Toronto Maple Leafs won the President's Trophy this year. And Boston and Edmonton in the finals. Individual awards. Steven Stamkos wins the Art Ross. Honestly, I think Steve, Steven Stamkos is an underrated NHL player. If we're be being honest here, everybody underrates him. Everybody's like, Nikita Kucherov. Tampa Bay would not be Tampa Bay without Steven Stamkos. Remember when Tampa Bay was floundering there? When uh, Le Cavalier turned into like a terrible player? And then Steven Stamkos scored a 60-goal season and then broke his leg? Or shattered it or something? Steven Stamkos is a beauty. He also wins the Hart Memorial. Congratulations. James Norris goes to John Carlson. Lady Bing goes to Nikita Kucherov. Tampa Bay was having a phenomenal season. Calder goes to Kirill Kaprasov. Okay, Colin Smythe goes to David. David Krejci is the playoff hero for Boston. Vesna goes to Frederick Anderson. He also wins the William M. Jennings. Bill Masterton goes to Jeff Petrie. Jack Adams goes to... Hey! Uh, that, this is, I think this is a first... Our coach won the Jack Adams. Gilroy wins the Jack Adams. Frank J. Selke goes to Ryan O'Reilly. Ted Lindsay goes to Steven Stamkos. And Nathan McKinnon wins the Rocket. Okay, awards are over. We pick up one award, but not the big award. It is the end of year one. But let's go ahead, sim towards the draft. But first, I want to talk about the draft itself. There are a few guys on my radar. Obviously, we're not going to have a, jan a chance at Alexis Lafreniere, Jeffrey Woodworth, or Quentin Byfeld or Tim Stutzel. We're not going to have a chance. If one of those teams want to trade, maybe, maybe we work it. But if we can trade up, we'll try. Jake Sanderson would be good, but I know what all those guys are about. There's two Russians in the top 20 that I am very, very excited about. You have this Ivan Kasparaitis, and then you have Vasyaslav Kondraitiv. 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 Sure. I like both of these guys. If we have a chance to pick one of these guys, I'm not sure who I'd go with. He's similar to Joe Thornton. You just don't throw that com comparison around. You know, you don't... You don't. Sean Couturier Kasparaitis might be the guy to go with. Two phenomenal comparisons. I'm not sure. Kasparaitis might be the guy to go with. Left winger and a centerman. Do we need a left winger, though? We have Goudreau, Kachuk. Kachuk we could always move around. A centerman would be sick. A centerman of the future. I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. Uh, we got this Vickers, a defenseman. Uh, overall, there's a few guys we're going to pick up throughout the draft. We got Travis Potter... There's a bunch of guys that we that we'll try to pick up throughout the draft. We're gonna do our best. We're gonna make moves. That's that's basically a definite at this point. A lot of guys, a lot of guys that we're gonna go after. But let's go ahead, sim towards the draft, and I will not be doing the draft interviews because it's stupid and it never works and it shows you zero information. It's boring. EA, please step it up. Sorry, that's just my opinion. And Colorado is going to get Alexis Lafreniere. Oh my god, Colorado. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair, Colorado. Nathan McKinnon just won the rocket. Now he's getting Alexis Lafreniere. Oh my god. From 13th to number one, Colorado locks the hell out. Same with Nashville, from 8th to 2nd. Detroit even wins a lottery. 
no offense, Detroit, I'm sorry you didn't win number four IRL, but I'm sorry you didn't win number one IRL and you dropped a fourth, but it do be like that. And Los Angeles moves from one to number four. That absolutely sucks for Ottawa. Oh my God. Jeez Louise. Okay. Let's let's get towards the draft. It is going to be an interesting year. Maybe Colorado wants to move that first overall pick. I wonder if they do that. Retired players in year number one. Patrick Marlowe calls it a career. 1,100 points, almost 1,200 in 1,666 career games. 500 goal score. Is he a Hall of Famer? I know you might say, but not uh, no individual awards. Man, 500 goals. That's hard to say no to. Marion Hossa obviously got into the Hall of Fame IRL this year easily. Henrik Zetterberg will be a Hall of Famer. Marion Gabryk? Uh, maybe. Zdeno Chara calls it quits. 43 years of age. Damn. Wow. Goodbye. Okay. A lot of guys calling it quits this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real question is, did we lose anybody? Goaltenders. No goaltenders call it quits, but I want to make sure we didn't lose anybody. It doesn't look like we lost anybody important. Where's us? Calgary, obviously. No, we didn't lose anything at all. That's a good thing. That's a good thing we lost absolutely nothing in year one. I didn't expect us to lose anything. The only thing I thought maybe we had a chance of losing was Giordano, but I know a lot of you guys don't want me to trade him, but if there's a trade out there to be made, maybe we look at it. Draft interviews, I don't care. It's stupid. Let's head into the draft. Year one, this is important. We, we have to reboot our prospect pool. It looks okay right now, but Colorado wants to trade that pick. Alexis Lafreniere is on the board. Okay, Colorado. No, do we... Do oh, I can't cheat the system like this. I can't just cheat the system, can I? No. But I've never had Alexis Lafreniere. No, oh, but Colorado wants to trade him. I've never had Alexis Lafreniere. Do we trade for him? We got to do this quick. Like right now. We have to decide right here, right now. I haven't had him in NHL 20 yet. I mean, IRL Calgary might even get him in the lottery. Okay, I'd, I'd give them... Oh, God. I'd give them... We'd have to give them something phenomenal. I'd give them Roman. I'd have to give them our first. Our first. Man, there's not... I mean, we did this in Minnesota. We traded for the first overall pick that set us on a nice course for the entirety of the franchise mode that we got Anthony Francis, right? Do we just... Play it safe. Year one. I know a lot. Of, I don't know if you guys would want us to trade for this pick. I know a lot of you guys would be like, do it. But I don't want it to be. I think Colorado, IRL, if they had a chance to pick Alexis Lafreniere, they wouldn't trade that pick. I know the computer says they want to trade that pick. But I don't think Colorado would it ever. Nobody's going to trade Alexis Lafreniere. That is not a thing that would be done. Would any of these other top teams be interested? Number 10, maybe we move up there. Okay, we have no pick number 24. So I'm not even going to bother. I know it's on the board. I'm, I'm trying to reason with myself. No, don't do it. If I was doing it in an offline franchise mode, I would, because it's fun. But we got to think realistically here. Colorado, there's no way they would trade that pick. No team would ever trade that pick for nothing. There's no ideal trade out there. So, there's nothing we could give them that would make sense. Johnny Goudreau and two first-round picks? That's probably it. So, number 10 is on the board. Colorado, we're not going to be stealing that pick from you because it would be a sham. We, we would have to luck in to the first overall pick. But, number 10, who's on the board? Cole Perfetti. Uh, I've never had Cole Perfetti. But, I'm not... I don't want Lundell. He never works in the franchise mode. Maybe we go ahead and pick one of these guys. Maybe we use our assets to pick up both of them. Because I think one of them's medium elite. 
One of them is for sure medium elite. I'm not sure who, but I think I think Casparitis is the medium elite guy. Or at least a high overall. Both of them are high overall. I can feel it. I don't need a defenseman. We already have, already have Valimaki and... Uh, who else? Shillington. We have Shillington. So we have two really good prospect defensemen. I think we just make the trades. So pick number... I gotta look at it again. So we're gonna sim pick number one. <laughs> and they pick Alexis Lafreniere. An 82 overall high franchise playmaker. Nashville's gonna get something great. Detroit's gonna get something great. Uh, they're probably gonna get Tim Stutzel. Good for them. It actually looks uh, really realistic to what it looked like IRL. I mean, Colorado, no. Nashville, no. But Detroit, LA, Ottawa, New Jersey, Anaheim is there. New Jersey again, right? It, it kind of looks interesting. So pick number 14. There's a few on the board. I gotta write this down. So I want both of the Russians. I want the Russian duo. What picks are they at? What picks? Number, number 18... 18 and number 21. At uh, 21, what's nine plus 10? 21. Oh god, that's a. Oh, he's a grinder. Oh, oh that kind of changes things. I mean, I'd rather go after Con Kondreative. <laughs> I think for sure this is the guy to go with. I mean, he played really well in a men's league. That's very rare to see. And he's soft-spoken for a Russian. It's pretty good. Okay, we're going to... I think we're going to go for Kondratev. Pick number 18. Is 18 on the board? No. So that means I'm going to trade for 16. I know we might have to give up a bit more. But I want this Russian for sure. Now, hello. We'll give you pick number... We will give you pick number 24. But see... Ugh. Nashville's gonna trade here in a sec. Okay. Is there anybody on our squad? Ooh, Sam Bennett's up to an 84. I freaking called it, ladies and gents. I knew after a season like that he'd grow. Yes. Friggin' yes. Hell yes. That beautiful. Now, do I give them like a Roman? Or, man, I don't really like Rasmus Anderson. I think the contract that he signed to kicks into $4 million is going to hurt us a lot. I think it's going to hurt us. I, I know you might be like, but he's great. He might be a good prospect or a good player IRL, but in this game, he's not, it isn't really working out. 81 overall. What's the most he can grow to? At this point, maybe an 84. For $4 million, we could spend that elsewhere. That's a TJ Brody. We can get TJ Brody back. We have, we have Valimaki coming. We have Shillington. I think Rasmus Anderson sending him the other way to St. Louis. We can potentially keep our first round pick. But I would give you... Is there a goaltender you want? There's no goaltender you want. So I'll give you... You want a third next year? So uh, Anderson and a third to St. Louis for the 16th overall pick. Trade rejected. St. Louis, you gotta be like that. Really? I get it, St. Louis. I get it. You gotta be like that. Please, 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 please. Who do you want? Who do you want? I'll give you this. Fuke? <laughs> Is that God? Uh, Lucas, I'm not. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that last name. Let's see. Let's get this trade done. Trade rejected. Okay, so we're gonna have to work on this. Rasmus Anderson might not be the guy going the other way. Jeffrey Woodworth goes to the Nashville Predators. Glad he's in the other conference. So with St. Louis, we might, we might just have to trade them our pick, our 24th overall pick. Keep Rasmus, because I don't really like him on this team. But uh, let's go ahead, give them our 24th overall pick. And what uh, do you like anything on our team? Maybe we give you a third next year, not move anything. Damn it, you really don't want to do this. St. Louis, please. Please. Please, St. Louis. Please. Trade accepted. Thank you, St. Louis, for pick number 16. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. You know, this Russian might not be the best. I feel like I've seen this situation before. 
The other Russian, the grinder, is going to be the medium elite. But he's a grinder, so it's probably going to be a, like a 50, over, 50 overall, but it says he's got a two-year ETA. Okay. Okay, so let's sim to our pick at number 16. I'm going to call... I'm going to call some timeouts. I'm going to call a few timeouts just so we can get some stuff done. I'm going to call three timeouts because I feel like it. And this is my channel. I'll do what I want. Okay, so let's go all the way back up to pick number one. Lafreniere, Woodworth, Quentin Byfeld to Detroit, Tim Stutzel to the LA Kings. They might even go there IRL. Jamie Drysdale to the Ottawa Senators. Marco Rossi to Buffalo. Ponomarev to Anaheim. Alexander Holtz to Columbus. Okay, Lucas Raymond to Winnipeg. Cole Perfetti to New Jersey. Lundell to New York. Sanderson to Ottawa. Drafting two, two of the top defensemen in this draft. Antonio Stranges to New Jersey. Tyler Clevin to Philadelphia. Radulov to New Jersey. New Jersey's had a great first round so far. And with pick number 16, I it's going to be... It's going to be Vacheslav Kondrativ going to be him we need a center prospect but i also want the chance to pick this he's got a one-year eta i think casparitis if we can trade for that other pick i'll do it so pick number what he's supposed to go what what did it say like 24 23 uh, i'm gonna try to trade anderson because if we have a chance at that kid I don't want to get Askarov. I know we have Dustin Wolf, and goaltenders are easy to come by. And Askarov isn't going to be the greatest. He never simulates well, so don't, don't, I really don't feel like it. 20, 21. Looks like he'll go at 21. So 21. 21 will go and go ahead and pick, take Vegas. Vegas, does Vegas have any cap space? Looks like they have a few million dollars in cap. Would you like Erasmus Anderson? Would you? Help us with cap. Would you do that trade straight up? Trade rejected? Okay, we can give you a little bit more. Don't worry. Do you want anything else? <laughs> Would you like... Damn. Okay, so do you want rookie skaters? Is there really anything to give up? Nah, we got this kid right here. You want to do that? Trade accepted. Thank you so much, Vegas. I could not pronounce that guy's name. I'm sorry. Z uh, Dini. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, next bout of business. Milan Lucic. Where the hell are you, bud? Milan Lucic. I better not forget going into free agency. That, that would hurt us very badly. He's probably got a, the least amount of trade value. I am I'm right. No. God damn. Why, Owen? Why? Okay. Come on, Owen. I believe in you. Okay. I doubt there's a trade out there. No trades found. <laughs> no. Milan Lucic. Oh, we're going to have to retain on his salary. Is there... I will take a seventh, and I'll re literally retain... How many years does he have left on that? Four. Oh, my God. Anybody want Milan? Boston. Boston. You want Milan. You want Milan back. You're a champion. You could use the grit. We'll take a seventh. Oh, Boston! <laughs> Boston did it! Boston, you idiots! You took Milan back! You absolute goons! <laughs> Boston! They... They took it, no doubt. There was no need to explain it. They're like, Milan Lucic wants to come back to Boston? We'll put him in Providence. Oh my god. We just traded the Milan Lucic contract for a seventh? There's... N Boston, you absolute fools. That's five million dollars in cap space we just got. We got, in the offseason, we got an extra, like, ten million dollars in cap. If, if Taylor Hall is in free agency... If Taylor friggin Hall is in free agency, oh my god. Yes, I this is this is why I'm general manager. This is why cuz I'm a beast. Okay. Uh is there any literally anything else? I'm going to first I'm going to do fine trade 
for the Mark Giordano. For, for Mark Giordano. Not Mark, not for Mark. You know what I mean. <laughs> Is there anybody that would be interested in Giordano? I don't want to trade him, but if there's something out there. No. No. A first and a second, 27th. No, you. Shane Bowers, not a bad prospect. Uh, first from Colorado, but they just got Lafreniere. Nope. No. Den Ooh, nah. Nah. Denizenko would be sick. Left winger, nah. We do need more... Uh, uh oh Montreal Canadiens first from next year. I will come back to check on that. I'll, I'll write that down. MTL. Pittsburgh, probably not going to be the best. Vancouver. Vancouver, I'll write that down. Jet Wu, not a bad prospect. Uh, no. Nope. Hugo Haas, Finola, Green, Stanley. So first I'm going to check Montreal. Check Montreal. That first. It's kind of a throwaway first, but if they're a bad team next, they're a champion. Okay, how about uh, Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh wanted a shot at him. They're a champion. Okay, and uh, Vancouver. Vancouver's going to be great, too. I think for leadership, the best thing to do right now is to keep Mark Giordano. Yeah, but they want to trade Vasily Podkols and Nils Hoglander, who I had in my last franchise mode. You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to check the trade block. See if there's anything out there on the block. Okay, so we're going to go to offer trade. Because it looks like there's some prospects on the block right now that we could maybe, maybe get a hold of. Anything interesting, so. Let's do our due diligence. We do this every offseason in every franchise mode I do, so let's, let's see. Ooh, Soderstrom from Arizona. Okay, not a bad prospect, but do we need a defensive prospect? I'm looking for more, more of an offensive prospect. Not sure what I want to trade, but Jonathan Taze, what are you in Chicago, my god. Alexander Newhook. Now they want to trade him to Colorado. I mean, that would make even more sense now, right? Since they just got Lafreniere, but if they're smart, they'll keep him. That's all I'm saying. And now the, the now there'll be a new powerhouse, right? Uh, Philpula. I don't think I want to take tank this team. If there's not a prospect out there that I'm really looking for, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take the tank this team for one specific player. Okay, if we're tanking this team, it's not going to be for a season. It's going to be for a few. Oh, Zach Parise. <laughs> Minnesota. Okay. Anything out here? I think, uh, nope. We might just hold on to the captain, Giordano. That might be the best bet. I've heard that he simulates well towards the end of his career. Might be the best bet. Wait, Philadelphia, what do you got here? Cameron York... Clevin that you just drafted, Ratcliffe, Rupsov, Jinning, nah, nothing interesting. San Jose. Ooh, Evander Kane. Evander Kane is on the block. That'd be a phenomenal player to have. Maybe that's a player we look towards getting during free agency. Right, right now I'm not really into that. Tampa Bay. Uh, Kajakovic seems to be the best prospect there foot isn't too bad, but nothing else I'm really interested in. Toronto! Oh, Nicholas Robertson. That is a top-tier prospect. Bracco, I'm not very interested in. Since he's 23, I doubt he becomes anything over an 82. Robertson, though, would definitely be a player I'd be interested in. He'd be he'd be great. Vancouver, Pod Colson, and Hoglander. We had Hoglander, so I'd I'd stay away from him right now. Pod Vasily Podkolzin, never used him. Vegas, Peyton Krebs. Okay, not bad. And Washington and Winnipeg. Only guy I'm really interested in there was from Toronto. Nicholas Robertson. Is there anything on our... Is there anything here that you'd be interested in? Noah Hannafin? I'm not giving up Noah Hannafin. What, are you on drugs? <laughs> ah, I don't want to give away Dustin Wolf either. I also don't want to give, give away Riddish. So there's not a whole lot we can give up right now. So I, we could draft Nicholas Robertson anytime soon, right? Right?
Wait, what? Did we just trade for that Vegas pick? No, wait. Right. Oh my god, I'm like, when, when did when did we do that? Oh my god. We just traded the Rasmus Anderson for the 19th. Oh god, I'm slow. Holy moly. Okay, so there's nothing out there on the block that I want to do. Don't even want to trade away Giordano. So first, we're going to make our selection. I'm worried that these aren't going to work out, but everything around this pick, Pedersen, Seth Jarvis, I know what they're like. Wallander's pretty solid. Zari's not bad. Vickers might be a solid guy, depending on how good Kondratev is, but Vickers, 17 right-handed. Three-year ETA, similar to Nick Letty. After that, there's a few good second-round picks. We have, what, 46? Uh, Lapierre might be really good. Gundler would be sick. After that, we got a McInnes, Bickle. So we don't need to pick Vickers in the first round, I think. With this selection, we will be picking the Russian forward with the, what is this, number 16. With the 16th overall pick, the Calgary Flames would also like to congratulate the Boston Bruins on finally winning something other than the President's Trophy. I would like to select as my first ever pick as general manager of the Calgary Flames a Russian forward from Russia, Vesheslav Kondraitev. Welcome to the team. Oh, what a pick! What a pick, you beauty, Owen! You did it! You did it! Oh my god, what a phenomenal pick in the first round. After all those picks went by, Stranges, after Lundell, there was a few picks there, and then I picked the Russian. I knew it, and I called it. That's the centerman of the future. I'm not even sure what he's going to be like. Is he a two-way? Maybe he's a sniper. Maybe he's a playmaker. It works either way. He's 66 overall. He's not NHL ready, but he's our future. Maybe we put him in the AHL this year. But he is the future of this team. I'm going with the other Russian. So two picks. Sim to pick number 19. Pedersen and Jarvis go. See, I didn't go with the safe pick. I went out of my way to get the Russian. And that was the right call. Future captain of this team, maybe? I don't know, but a phenomenal pick right there. Pick number 19. You know what, let's go with our gut again. We, got, we don't need Vickers. We can go with Bickle later on. Let's go with the other Russian. I'm not sure. Maybe he's a t top six. I think the worst he could be is a top six potential uh, left winger. And he's got a one-year ETA similar to Sean Couturier. Let's go. From Russia, we would like to select Ivan Kasparaitis. Welcome to the team. Oh, what a pick. What a pick. He's the next Milan Lucic. But good. But good. What a pick! The two Russians come to Calgary. Oh, yes. We made the right selections in round number one. He's probably not NHL ready. A year in the AHL, and I think he is NHL ready. Oh, my God. We, make the, we made it. We made the absolute... Fant we made the best picks. Best picks available. We did everything we needed to do in round number one. We made the trades. Oh, tell me... Tell me that Rasmus Anderson uh, and his cap is gone isn't worth a 74 overall in year one. Tell me, because our defensive core is great either way. Now we have the cap to go out and keep this team together. Phenomenal. I'm a genius. I'm Albert Einstein. I'm like Iserman with Tampa Bay. Okay. So our next pick is 55. Let's check around there, see, what, see what's around number 55. 55. 55. Is there... I like a lot of things before 55 because you got a Bickle, Lapierre, who's a great centerman. Uh, Gundler's not bad. Uh, Kick Hart's pretty good. Nybeck. Bickle would be really good to bring on in a, a defensive prospect. We did just pick two forwards. McKinnis would also be really good. 55. There's nothing. I'd, I'd move up a few picks. Goaltender. I don't need it. Any other goaltenders this draft? Uh, we might even pick one late. Might be the best thing to do, but uh, pick number 55. Let's uh, move up. So our pick is right. What, where is it? Right there. I want to move up. 
like a bunch of spots. Like, what is it? Now, what is number 12 in the second round? 43? I want to make sure that works. <laughs> I want to make sure... Because are we move? Oh, let's move up for Bickle. He, our scouts do want us to pick him. He might be really good. Our scouts have done a phenomenal job this year. A phenomenal job. No pay raise though, because screw him. Because he'll do bad next year when we need them the most. So, who? I'm not feeling McKinnis. You know he might be good. He is NHL ready. And Bickle is has a four-year ETA. If there's the ability to pick both of them at 48, 48, and 50. So we bring on two Russians in the first round. Let's go try to bring on two Americans in the second round. Do we have any more assets to give up? So what? LA was right there, go up a few spots. 48, uh, 16 would be, uh, 47, great spot. Okay, we'll g obviously give them our second, and then we can give them one of our sevenths. Would they do that trade? Trade rejected, I think it's only gonna take a little more. Maybe we give them a that's a, oh, we don't have a lot of draft picks next year. Is there any rookie skaters here that you'd be willing to take? Phillips isn't bad. I'm okay with giving them top nine guys. Montreal, come on. Trade accepted. Thank you, Montrebeck, for doing that. So let's sim up to our next pick, number 47. Let's see how the first round went. See who was taken. Obviously, this has been a great first round. Next year's going to be even better. Oh, the two Russians. Zari, Vickers. See, Vickers wasn't even worth it. I'm so glad we went with our gut. It rarely ever works out, but I was right. Askarov, don't worry about goaltending. I We went with the Russian. The right Russian. Okay. Uh, a few really awesome guys here in the second round, but I want to get something good. I want to get something good. So let's go ahead with the 47th overall selection. I'm proud to select from the US of A NCAA program, Mike Bickle. 61 overall? That's a great pick. But I also want to get the other guy. Uh, two picks away. This would be what? Pick number 50 on the dot. If everything works out, this is, this is good. But is there anything else we can give to them? Is there, is there anything else that we can... Derek Ryan. I don't feel like bringing back Derek Ryan either way. I, I don't... He doesn't really fit into my system. He might be the guy to go the other way to, to LA. I think, I think that's a right trade. They got a lot of prospects coming up. They could use a depth guy. I'll bring back Ben Hutton. Works for me. And then... Uh, we can give you... What, what else do you want? <laughs> do you want a goaltender? Do you want... I probably do need one, right? Tyler Parsons. I'm, I might be putting too much into... Well, you want this Zagadilin guy? Would you do this trade? Trade accepted, LA, you... Oh, oh, the teams are just... Thank you. Thank you so much. Sim to pick number 50. Does everything go all right? Yes, it does. This Kalanen guy goes. So both these prospects were really good. Let's pick the other American. Low elite. But it says he's NHL ready, which means he's got to be at least 75 overall, right? Jacob McInnes from the US of A. It is 4th of July when I'm recording this, so welcome to Calgary. 76 overall, low elite defenseman at 17. He's going to grow like a weed. Oh. This has been that kind of draft. This has been the draft. Yes, Owen, you beautiful bastard, you. <laughs> oh, yeah, you love that. You love to see it. Sim to pick 111. What do we miss in round number two? This has been a long video. I'm so well, it is every other day, so I I'm sure you guys appreciate a longer video since it's every other day for Cal uh, Calgary. 
I think the players that we've picked have... This is one of my best first two rounds in a very long time. And it wasn't even top-tier picks. Like, it wasn't, like, first, second, third overall. We had the ability to go out and pick Lafreniere, but I feel like that's kind of cheating the system. But we go out there, and we pick guys that I wasn't even sure about, and it's going to work out for us. These guys are going to be phenomenal. McKinnis. I think we did the right thing here. I think year one has been an absolute success, and we're not even in a worse position to succeed next year. We're going to go out into free agency. Maybe get a Taylor Hall. Maybe we get a Taylor Hall. Maybe we get a Taylor Hall. You don't know. No! Potter's off the board! Damn it! No! I knew I missed someone! Oh, uh, you know what? Damn it! Oh, uh, you know what? Year one wasn't perfect. I completely forgot about Potter. 49 overall power for it. I'm not hurt. We could have used a right wing prospect, but... I'm not super upset with that. Now, I think the rest of our picks are just going to be like, whatever, do whatever you want. We got this uh, Andrei Afanasenkov. I'm going to pin him. Any other guys I have pinned for the rest of the draft? No, he's the only guy. So let's go to potential, see if there's anything interesting out here. Uh, we got this uh, Exelby at one, 137. He, ooh, okay. Everything else doesn't seem too great. Helsgrons isn't too bad. Goaltending, 230. We might be able to pick him. How many picks do we have left? Two, three? What are we... Oh, Jan Bednar would be a solid goaltender to bring on. Yeah. There's a few guys that we have the ability to bring on. I, I don't feel comfortable with getting this kind of guy. Three points, four-year ETA. I don't like him. He might be solid, but I, I'm not super confident with that. I'm going to go with this Andrei Afanasenkov at 120. Let's see if it works. I doubt. Come on. You know what? It could have been worse. For the fourth round, that's not bad. It's more trade value. We were bound to have one bad pick this entire draft, right? 148. Let's uh, view draft class. I want to make sure we do this the right way. Okay. Who was that pin player we have? When is he going? He's going at 137. Let me write that down. 137. Goaltending. 137. Let's go to the next round. And we trade for what? The third overall pick in the fifth round? I think that works for me. 127. Yeah, it's a bit before, but it doesn't really hurt my feelings. I'll give you our... I'll give you our sixth round pick. Okay. And I will also give you our sixth round pick next year. Ooh, you're, you're dirty bastards. Okay. Would you straight up do... Would, would you do... Ah, I think that should work, right? Trade accepted. Thank you, New Jersey. Uh, late round picks next year, I, I doubt it would be anything too special. And we can pick them up alongside trades. I'm not really worried about that. We might have given up too much for that pick, but it's, it's whatever. I'm just trying to do the right thing here. Didn't Doesn't look like we missed anything super great. I'm okay with that. Makes me happy. Cat, okay. So, with the next pick, we are going to select, I believe, where is he? I'm scared he's not going to be great. He's 18, five-year ETA. Let's do it. Let's see if he's anything good. I, that's a great pick. Shannon Exelby, 57 overall, low elite. He might grow, he might not, but that's trade value, and that's exactly what we need. Sim to pick number 148. Uh, fifth for a sixth and a seventh next year. Now I'll rather keep on to the, keep a hold of this pick right this very second. Okay, it's been a phenomenal draft so far. <sighs> I'm happy with the picks we've made. Uh, you can't be any... T uh, we didn't even trade our captain. But we did trade Rasmus Sanderson, but I'm not upset by that. We kept our core intact. I think right now is the best time to pick a goaltender. I think first we are going to pick Jan Bednar, add another goaltender to the prospect pool. 52 overall starting goaltender, phenomenal pick right there. 217, which is the seventh round. Let's see what we missed in the fifth. Doubt we missed anything super special. I think we're going to pick one more goaltender with our late pick. So we missed a low elite. Nah, whatever. I'm not really upset about that. Another low elite and Yakupov. Cool. 49 overall, but another low elite. Okay, there's a few so far. 
It doesn't really upset me, though. I'm happy with what we've gotten so far. It's been a great draft. Seventh round. We're getting to the very late stages of this draft. Are we going to finish out with a great pick? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, it's the last pick in the draft. Oh, because Boston, obviously, duh. Okay, 217. Let's go ahead and pick a goaltender. Which goaltender do we go with? Which goaltender am I feeling? Let's go with this Joel Blomfist. Let's do it. Fringe starter. This was a phenomenal draft. Draft. Our top four picks were phenomenal. I think it was a great draft. I don't think you can disagree with me. We kept this team in a forward motion. We're not taking a step back. I think we can continue to compete. Now we have a crap ton of cap space. We traded Milan Lucic for nothing. Didn't have to retain. We traded Rasmus Anderson. It is a defenseman, but we can easily get that kind of guy back for less money. We did the right thing, I believe. But this has been a long enough episode. In the next episode, I believe we will get through free agency. Uh, we'll probably start the next season as, as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.